Hello, everybody. Hello from a different setting. I am um, I'm here in the home that I pretty much grew up with. Um, or in, not with, but in. That's not the first home I lived in, but uh, we moved here when I was six, give or take, five and a half, six, and uh, lived here until I went off to school. Um, these bookshelves behind me are filled with um, mostly things of uh, my parents. A few things of mine still, I think, perhaps, but um, just kind of comfortable to be here. Hey, Charlie, I'm glad to see you. Uh, I had hoped to be able to walk out and... Uh, visit with you in, at the San Francisco Bay. But as is Mother Nature's thing, it's sometimes difficult to uh, get her to cooperate. So between people wearing masks with COVID in the areas that are quiet enough for us to sit and look at the, the view and um, some of the fire stuff that's still going on here in California, um, I just decided to give you a this space instead. So I hope everybody's having a great afternoon, morning, whatever time it is, whatever day it is uh, that you are, are watching this. And um, today I thought, you know, we've been having, hey, Charlie, the other Charlie, Charlie McCormick, good to see you. <laughs> um, been Pastor Bob's been spending uh, a lot of this week on... Um, he did some Q and A in one of his coffee uh, things, and um, just talking about stuff that's kind of important uh, for each one of us that matters. You know, there's lots of ways we can get into deep study about things. Um, I'm actually, I love to dig in deep, and. I'm hoping that at some point here in the not too distant future, we're going to be starting some online studies that we can do together uh, where we can truly dig deep in the word and um, also visit with each other using our gifts that we're able to bring to the table a more robust experience of the word in the study. But for these times where it's limited to me talking and you guys texting um i i just i find it a little easier to uh really spend the time talking about the things that are important to us on a daily basis that way we're we're never really we're never really um we're able to connect more quickly at a little more intimate level so um things that I wish I'd known or maybe implemented when I was younger. Um, I have wise parents, wise grandparents, so I can't actually say that I might not have known this stuff. And there are many people who say that um, I have been 40 since I was four. <laughs> But things that we can, we can know now and practice now on a regular basis, regardless of our, our time in the Word or our time to have Socratic discussion with each other. Yeah, Charlie, you love digging in deep too? Yeah, me too. So one of the greatest pearls of wisdom is don't worry about what other people think of you. That's a big one. I don't mean to say don't be sensitive to others. I, I, I always struggle a little bit to have to just caveat everything in this day of um, primal at emotional attachment to something and almost the visceral need of people viewing things um, to find the to find something wrong in what somebody's saying. But, you know, don't worry about what other people think of you. I, I, 
obviously, if you're a, a good human being and you're, you're kind and you're loving, no matter what you do, no matter how kind, no matter how loving you are, there are going to be people who disagree with you or disagree with what you're doing. Um, or maybe they're just disagreeable. <laughs> and if you spend your time concerned and consumed with what other people think of you, you're going to have a difficult time being able to get things done. Um, and why is that important? Well, it's important because every decision we make, our little decisions, help formulate who we are and help create who we are in such a way that those decisions affect our next little decisions, which affect ultimately some of our bigger decisions. And everybody has an opinion. Um, but somebody's opinion of you is based on history. Um, either things you have done or things you've been presumed to have done. It doesn't have much to do with what's going on in the moment or in the future. And that doesn't, you know, obviously people who love you and know you well are going to be available to you and their opinions do matter. Um, but you cannot be making decisions about your life because of what the greater world thinks. So that's always a really important thing. Um, Charlie, I'm sorry you said there, uh, uh, you no longer need other people's approval of you and that you know God loves you. Well, you are so blessed and that is awesome. And that's another great pearl of wisdom, not one that I was, not one of the few I was planning on saying, but that's absolutely true. God loves you. God loves you right where you're at. God loves you tomorrow. He loves you infinitely, unconditionally. And um, and if there's something that matters, uh, an opinion that matters, that's what matters. He loves you unconditionally. Doesn't mean there might not be correction there, but that's okay. We we He's the one that matters. And then we go forward from there. Another great pearl of wisdom. Today is what's important. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. Today, this moment, it's what's important. I've been thinking about that a lot this week. One of the reasons that my background has changed, I'm home visiting um, my mother. Um, and this is the living room, in, a wall of the living room in, in the house in which I grew up. And um, I'm here because she needs my help and um, I'm able to come and be helpful. And uh, the idea that, you know, there's lots of other things going on in my life besides right here, but this is what's important in this moment. And I'm here in this moment. And um, being able to focus on having a quality time here is essential to, to having a contented and joyful life. Yesterday, my mom and I went to an appointment, and then after the appointment, we, we, um, we drove to the San Francisco Bay. She lives very near there, and um, I, I walk there most evenings when I'm here, so it's, it's easy to get to. And we sat on a bench, and the bench was uh, put there by a family with a memorial plate on it, and um, we talked about maybe that'd be something cool to do f with our family. And um, we enjoyed the squirrels that came around us up at our feet. Apparently, they're accustomed to being fed. Um, we hadn't done this in a long time, my mom and I. We used to travel a lot together, a couple times a year. And um, this this was... You know, that slowed down some of her a little bit. So being present today is what's important. And um, and I want to drive that home for you. Right now, what you're doing is important. And the next minute you're doing something, that's important. It doesn't mean don't plan. Again, the caveats. But being in the moments just really 
anchoring in what God would have you do. You can't take advantage of opportunities if you're not present emotionally and physically to acknowledge those opportunities and be obedient. So um, just very, very improved. Hey, Ruthann, I'm glad to see you there. Glad to have you join us today. And another wonderful piece of wisdom shared by my my grandparents and my parents is uh, let it go. You can't really be present today if you're worrying about what's already happened. And um, let it go. Unmet expectations, difficult situations, failures, conflict. They're, the, they're in the past. They're past events. And you can't change it. Um, my dad used to say you can't unring the bell. Uh, and you're wasting your energy and your creative thought if you're spending time in that space. Sure, we can learn from mistakes that we make. We can learn from mistakes other people make. We can learn from the things we have to endure because of the consequences of our actions or others. But there's there's a difference between, um, you know, ruminating over something a little bit uh, versus being permanently stuck there where you just get compulsed and your mind goes over it and over it and over it again. Uh, let things roll off your back. My friends, early in sanctuary, they would ask how I'm doing and I'd say fine or like water off a duck's back. I truly mean that. I, most of the time, I am able to um, experience the things that are bothersome in that way. They are bothersome. I acknowledge it. And then it slides off my back and I move to the next thing. It's not because I'm insensitive. I'm actually very sensitive. I have a huge heart, as, as most of you do. But those things are just things. And uh, if I let them rule how I'm feeling, um, I'm not able to spend time on the Lord, the Word, be in a place to help people, be in a place to make good decisions for myself if I'm so consumed with um, the negative emotions or negative perceptions of stuff that's already gone by. Um, you know, I, I, I told you uh, a few times over various episodes of, of this that um, I really enjoy your feedback uh, when we when we're exchanging, um, sometimes it's immediate during this time that we're together right now. Other times it's later on. You have something that you <laughs> you're like, hey, I just remembered this from when we we chatted together last week or a couple weeks ago. Um, something that uh, caused me to put this next pearl of wisdom in today is a couple of comments from from you guys in weeks past. Um, and I'm going to call this Pearl of Wisdom. It's called work for a reason. And success at anything takes work. When you hear about somebody's overnight success story, there is no overnight success story. <laughs> that might be the first you've heard of it, but undoubtedly the individual who is experiencing the success has put a ton of effort and work and time and thought and passion into it. And um, nothing comes easy. You know, Pastor Bob's been working with Sanctuary International now for what, 40, 40 years in some fa form or fashion. Um, people think it's amazing that he's, you know, he podcasts and lots of people jump on to enjoy his words of wisdom and what he has to share. Um, this has come with tons of hard work and tons of ups and downs. And that's true for you and for me. Nothing, nothing comes without spending 
some effort on it. Now, yes, there are natural athletes and um, some people are naturally blessed with amazing brains that can be uh, wonderful at mathematics or reading or who knows. You might have a natural aptitude for something. God has given you a natural gift for something. And so you might excel without too much effort. But in the end, to truly utilize your gifts, to truly utilize God's blessings, to truly have something become bigger than what you are, it always requires work. And um, it takes time. It takes time to build a career or a business. It takes preparation, learning curve time, time to fail, because trust me, there's no success without failure. There is no success without failure. It's a prerequisite. Without making mistakes, or even if you don't make a mistake, but something just doesn't go the way you had hoped, consequences of others, perhaps, it, without it, there's no moving forward. You, you embrace the failure because it's the prerequisite to surviving it and, uh, and doing something more. It takes time to build a network. It takes time to build relationships with mentoring other people or being mentored yourself. Um, and to have people who want to be a part of whatever it is you're doing. Supporters. Without that, there's really, really nothing to focus on, right? So it's work for a reason. And without it, there's no forward movement. Now, if you have to do work you don't enjoy, and people talk about that a lot, you know, sometimes we, um, let's see, the things that I've done in life. So, I've worked as a teenager. I babysat. I worked in a, um, a swim center as a cashier. I worked as an auxiliary police woman in the town that I grew up in because for years there was no police women. And when they would arrest a female, we would have to transport that person out to the county jail. And I would get a call day or night. Um, I was on call and they would come pick me up and I would go do that. I have worked as a cashier in a restaurant. I've coached gymnastics, both teaching it and coaching it competitively. I worked as a administrator at the college I attended. I've worked as a labor negotiator for the university system and for 20th Century Fox, for Fox television stations for a few years. I have worked in a um, temporary personnel um, uh, company, helping place people in temporary positions. And I'm kind of going through these in order, so you can see there's no real rhyme or reason to some of it. There's great stories behind it, but you can see that they're ups and downs. I became a self-employed paralegal. I taught myself how to do that. And um, and all of these have great stories behind them. Uh, so I've, I've gone from making lots of money to not very much money. But each time, each job was important. Each time I was there for a reason. Each time I was able to help myself and other people. And my my dad's father, um, and my dad, my, my dad's father, he, he constantly said, you know, there's no reason to do something if you're not going to do it well. Everything you do, you should do it to the best of your ability. And because that's how you want to do it, not because somebody else is following you around to do it. And of course, that's what God would like us to do as well, right? But isn't it nice to have people in our lives that pose those challenges to us and mentor us a little bit. So, awesome. If you're gonna do something, do it well. Do it well because that's what you wanna do. Do it well because you think there's a reason for it. And if you don't believe in that, 
then that's my next pearl of wisdom. Believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, it's a little easier to be doing the job to the best of your ability because you understand the importance of your impact on others. We're not here in this world in a vacuum. We are in this world to bless others, to, sp to share the good news, to love on people, to bless others. So at any time, whatever we're doing, we need to do it to the best of our ability, knowing that somebody is going to benefit from it. However meaningful or not meaningful, if we're emptying a garbage can, if we are cleaning somebody's teeth because we're a dental hygienist, uh, whatever it is, it cannot ever be done too well. Always give it our best efforts. If you believe in yourself, who's your worst critic? Hopefully, it's not you. <laughs> But likely, there's some of us, our worst critic is ourselves. We can be our own best supporter. We need to have confidence in our value, our abilities, our contribution. Because why? Well, if we don't value those things, no one else is really going to be able to value those things. We can put on a facade, but in the end, discerning individuals and time will, the, the facade can't live under close scrutiny for long periods of time. So it's, it's important to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and be able to tell yourself that you are valuable. I, Nanette, I'm valuable. Charlie, you're valuable. Bob. Beeman. Well, Bob Beeman, hey, hi. <laughs> Dave Hart, you're valuable. It's wonderful we can look at each other and tell each other how valuable we are. Ruth Ann, you're valuable. I value you. Your abilities, what you bring to the table. But being able to do that for myself is key. It makes everything I do more meaningful because I believe in it and believing in myself is the start. You don't have to be able to see the final outcome. If you're doing something from A to Z and if you feel like you can't see a clear path to Z, that's okay. Get started with A and find your way to B. Enlist help if you need to. But you have the ability to do these things. You can move forward with a goal by just taking one step at a time. And as you get practiced at that, you will have more confidence in it. I'm so excited for us when we've talked about goal setting. And Pastor Bob talked about goal setting quite a bit back in um, April and May. He went, he spent a whole month and a half on goal setting. You can go back and look at the coffee break times then um, and some of the live chats, but you know the idea that you can write it down and, um, and then consider what might be standing in your way. People who are life coaches will call those obstacles, reasons and ways that you can't achieve your goal or things that kind of stand in that way. Sometimes what you find out is your goal is kind of big and maybe there's littler goals on the way to the big goal. There's nothing like doing that for your own self to give yourself confidence in your ability to identify something that needs to be done, to recognize things that might get in the way, to figure out ways to overcome those obstacles and to achieve the goal, right? Believing in yourself not everybody has had an opportunity to do that in your childhood or your teen years. Sometimes we escape that for some reason, jet into our 20s, our 30s, maybe even our 40s and 50s, because sadly the statistics 
of how many people actually write down their goals, it's like 10%. And yet 90% of the goals that are written down do get achieved. That's something to think about and a reason to spend some time on yourself and believe in yourself. Now, another great pearl of wisdom. Uh, don't burn your bridges. Oh, yes, Bob, and in the 60s as well. Yes, yeah, 60s, some people get to their 60s without goal setting or 70s. Or you're never, you're never too old to learn how to set a goal. And if you haven't done it lately and you already know how, it's never too late to reinvest. You should always have some projects going. That's, you know, my grandparents, especially uh, my mom's dad, but, but all four of my grandparents always had things in the mix, things they were planning to do, things they were thinking about doing. It could be something simple as planning the, the, the meals for a week for, you know, my grandmother who had to cook for a large number of people. It could be something um, as simple as, uh, and it's not so simple, right? Our life's goals, make sure that you, you get your car taken care of. You might may, make sure that you've, you know, got your household things planned out. It's, it, you know, it's, it's never, never too soon and never too early and, and never too minute to have a project in the works. So, uh, keep that in mind. Back to don't burn the bridges. <laughs> you never know when a former coworker or a former church member, perhaps, former pastor, former business partner, former acquaintance might come in handy. Now, I don't say that so that you can use people. I say that because we don't value people enough. Relationships, however short-lived, are never of little value. You'll note in your life, if you've not already experienced this, but if you, if you look through your relationships, you'll have met some people who seem to have no fear of asking for help or a favor um, or your contribution to assist them in something. That's awesome. They recognized in you something valuable, something that they either felt they couldn't do on their own or could use you to help them with, and they've gone ahead and asked for that. Well, that should be true for us as well. People come into our lives, we should be paying attention. What are the good things about them? What is going on in their life? What can I learn from an individual? How can I become a better person because this person's in my life? And in you know, seeing this person through through God's eyes, um, the benefit, not the annoyances, because we annoy people too. The benefit of whatever the nuances are in those relationships. Maybe you, you meet somebody at a camp and you know them for just a couple of weeks. When I was 12, 13, I went with my grandparents on a trip to Wisconsin and I met two gals there that I thoroughly enjoyed. We were great friends and we stayed in touch for the next 20 some years um, from just a three week adventure. And the reason we're not still in touch now is because they're no, they're no longer here. But, but what an awesome thing to be able to connect with people over a short period of time and be able to stay in each other's lives in some level, be, you know, be it pen pals and letters back in those days through now we have the blessing of texting and Facebooking and messaging and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, you never know. Um, relationships should never be taken for granted. Connections, maintaining them, fostering them, 
always a good idea, not for what you can get out of it later on, but what the two of you or what those relationships can build in the moment. That will determine what happens to your relationship later on. So you're building the relationship now. Don't just let it die on the vine. Continue with it. And if keeping those kinds of things going is a challenge for you, that's a great goal <laughs> to learn to foster relationships. It doesn't mean you have to stay in touch with somebody every day. Perhaps some of you are old enough to have had your parents keep up uh, relationships through Christmas card exchanges. Or maybe some of your parents, you know, uh, wrote letters here and there. That's not the thing that millennials do now, and there's other ways to keep in touch. But um, the depth of a relationship, the time it takes to sit down and write a letter, whether you email it or or do it in person, you know, and with a stamp, to find out about what's going on, the names of your friends' children, perhaps what those children like to do, the names of your friends' spouses, what's going on in their lives. You don't have to know every little thing. They have pets. What are the pets' names? What's important to, to them? If you find people that you invest in that way, they're going to invest in you back in the same way. And throughout the years, they'll be there in ways that you can't anticipate. So don't burn those bridges by neglect. Stay with somebody. Be tuned into them and appreciate them in the, in the moment. Charlie, you say that you've, uh, Charlie McCormick, you say you've met so many lovely people. God has put people into your pathway for, for you to encourage. That's amazing. That's great stuff. Uh, and right, I mean, you want to be able to be an encouragement to others. Um, and if you're recognizing that, that's, that's, it's not just lovely. God asks us to do that. Hey, Don, I'm glad to see you this afternoon. Welcome. If we can be encouraging to others and really bless others, uh, you know, those relationships, they'll stay intact forever. And that's a wonderful thing. Okay. What could come after don't burn your bridges? Well, money is not the most important thing. Did I just say that? Money is not the most important thing. It is important. We all have bills to pay. And I get that. Um, but in the end, maybe even in the middle, if you recognize it sooner than later, it's not the end goal, right? It's a means to certain things, but there's satisfaction in a job well done. There's satisfaction in contributing to something worthwhile. There's satisfaction in finding something you enjoy. And, um, and those are, should be more motivating goals and more important in helping you lead a less stressful life than money. Um, people who are wealthy don't have it easier than people who are not wealthy. Ah, uh, yeah, perhaps some of the creature comforts, but, you know, if any of you out there are, are seen to be reliable, you know, salt of the earth kinds of individuals. Everybody comes to you because you're the, you're the rock, right? You're the, you don't have any problems. People just embrace that and they come to you. You're, you're going to help them figure out what's going on and how to solve their problems. Well, I know who you are. <laughs> you're me. <laughs> and we all have problems. Money isn't the problem fixer. Money is a means to certain ends. If we want to bless others, sometimes it does take money. If we need to pay bills, sometimes it does take money. Unless you're able to broker something with chickens or, or eggs or whatever, other kinds of services, 
What if, for you, music is a passion? What if music is a de-stressor? And what if you have talent in and or around music? Don here, he shares every week with us uh, on his podcast information about music. He has a talented, he's a talented singer. He's also got a wealth of knowledge. He helps us embrace music in a way that it's interesting. Um, it gives us knowledge. It helps us spend time with the Lord. Um, there are people who play music for the same kind of thing. Some of us like to listen to music. And there's no shortage of that on, on our uh, Metal Matrix uh, community. The, the mere thought of talking about music and the sharing of that is a huge connector, a, a, a wonderful networking device, right? No money involved in it at all, unless we choose to want to include that. Money doesn't insulate us from pain or suffering or conflict. Money doesn't improve our relationships with those around us. It is a currency, and it helps us eat, dress, and live, but it is not magic. So, money is not all that. Now, don't be afraid to stand up and to stand out. Who told me that? A coach. When I was 11. It was a vice principal who coached our little middle school track and field team. He, he wasn't even talking about running. We were having a conversation in our little middle school track and field team about various things that were going on in the world at that time. And he said, if you feel strongly about something, take a stand. Take a stand. Speak up. If it's important to you, then stand up for it even if it's not popular. That's a good age to be taught something like that. It's a good age to be taught something like that in a big group. And you can see it's stuck with me for a number of years now. <laughs> oh, about 50. Um, conforming to society standards or whatever passes for the norm is not important. We want to be respectful of people. We want to be civil with people. We perhaps want to be clean, hygienic. Um, but we don't want to place too much emphasis on fitting in. And I know a lot of us here chatting today, we, we, we don't suffer from that effort of fitting in too much. We're we're pretty standout kinds of people, but I, it's very important to remember that uh, our opinions are our opinions. But if something is going on and needs, you know, bad things happen when good people do nothing. And what's a bad thing? Well, a bad thing can be all kinds of things. I mean, a bad thing could be people saying something or bullying somebody, saying something negative about somebody, gossiping. It can be a more physical injustice where somebody's being physically hurt. There's all kinds of things that go on that are not necessarily good, right? This is, this is earth. And um, 
there's some supernatural stuff at, at work. So here we are. Can we make a difference? Absolutely, we can make a difference, but we can't be afraid to make a difference. If you're not sure what to do, something's going on, pray about it. Ask your friends to pray about it. Ask for counsel. Don't turn away. Take a stand. And there's a few things out there right now happening in the world that people are polarized against each other. It's not important if you're pro-mask or anti-mask. It's not important which political party you belong to. It's not even important what your opinion is about those things. What is important is your ability to be civil and loving and caring and nurturing so that we can get along together and people can be able to coexist with each other. There's not a lot of that going on. There's all this polarization where my opinion is more superior to your opinion. There's polarization where I am smarter than you because I think what I think and you don't, so therefore you can't be intelligent. There's so much judgment going on. So I'm not saying get rooted in your opinion. I'm saying take a stand for love. Take a stand for civility. Take a stand for being respectful. Take a stand for, for showing that to other people. Implement it. Execute it. Do it over and over again. So that it's automatic. So that people see it. That your passion is love. And that your passion is being respectful and not judgmental. Because quite frankly, what we know today to be certain in our minds, tomorrow may not be true. What's important is love is true. What's important is treating each other civilly is true. Take that stand. Be there for others. Help others. All right. This is one of my favorites from all four of my grandparents and my dad and my mom. Life is not a race. Oh, yeah. Life is not a race. It's not a race. My sister and I were talking the other day about the things we're sure about. We're born, we're gonna die, or, or we're already dying, and taxes. <laughs> okay, so you know, who hasn't heard that before, right? Those are the things we're sure about. How we navigate between being born and our death Whatever is going on, it's not a race. We have lots to do, lots to accomplish. And the emotions inside of us, especially if we're passionate about things, sometimes things can be so intense. We feel so driven. We can't seem to help ourselves. We, we want to talk to everybody about it. We want to plan, plan, plan for the future. We get so caught up in all of that. We're moving towards it. We're not in the moment. Of course, that was a point way back at the beginning of all of this conversation. But you know what? For most of us, we're going to be here a while. We don't know, of course, when the end will come. Only he does. I have to have faith that he's going to allow me to be here for the length of time he needs me to do whatever it is he puts on my heart to do, right? And it's not a race. Sometimes 
maybe we we take a job and we have to have a learning you know learn new things to be able to do that job and it doesn't come to us naturally or as quickly as we'd hoped or we we start a new job and everybody's going through the same training and some people catch on faster than others do not be discouraged everything will happen in its due time you don't have to do everything at once and you don't have to do it at the same time as somebody else better to do it in the moment the best you can and appreciate it as you're doing it don't race from one thing to the next you know I, I have noticed this in um, with some of the elderly people that live um, in with my mom um, their bodies aren't moving quite the same speed that it, they once did. So you see an idea comes into their mind and they get up to start to, to go towards whatever thing that they're used to doing, you know, but their body doesn't respond like it once did. So they're in their mind, I'm going to get up and go get a drink of water, but their body moves slower than that now. And um, sometimes it results in a fall. They can't turn their feet as quickly, that kind of thing. Well, that's a physical example of our brain racing ahead of our body. Um, but sometimes our brain races ahead of our brain, <laughs> if, you, if that's possible. I mean, you get so caught up in moving towards something that you're not able to spend the time thinking it through. Processing. We don't know when the end will come. There's plenty of time to do whatever it is we have to be doing. And that's always true, no matter how urgent we feel. If we're having anxiety about it and urgency about it, let's pray on that. The Lord's not asking us to be anxious about anything. In fact, he very clearly says, do not be anxious. So if that's what we're feeling, that's us. There's time to take a breath and move towards it in a way that makes sense and that follows all the rest of the little tidbits that we've been talking about today. Now, my most favorite thing, this is my last big point of the day, my most favorite thing is looking for good in everything. And it's so much my favorite thing, it's actually my way of being. Um, Oh, and I, yeah, yeah, I know. All of you who know me really well, I'm, no, I'm not perfect, and I don't always see the good in every single, th single thing, but I am pretty, I'm pretty optimistic, and I do just sort of naturally see the good in stuff. If something changes, I'm looking for how that's going to make things better. Or if I can't see that obviously, then how to navigate the changes. If I meet somebody and they... I, I'm just looking for, for who they are. And I think that's because I got taught that early. I mentioned before, my dad has a huge heart. And of course, I, I'm very blessed. People in my family, my, my, my grandparents and probably their parents. I didn't know my great-grandparents. But you know, my dad, he was a school teacher and a coach. And he had a huge heart. There was room for everyone, and I think that everyone he ever loved knew that they were loved. And I don't feel like they ever thought they had to share time with him. That's how big our hearts are. You know, we have infinite capacity to love, right? Thank you, Bob. Yes, life is not a race. Yeah. <laughs> we have infinite capacity to love. And love well I know that there are people in our lives that feel encouraged if they get told they're being prayed for I want you all to know that you're all being prayed for 
regularly. At any time, any one of the various people who share with you on these live chats and podcasts, they're praying. And there's people all around the world in these positions doing that. They pray for whatever's going on in their lives, but a large number of them pray for the overall well-being of the Metal Matrix community and the individuals in the Metal Matrix community. There's not a way for any one of us to reach out to every single person to let you know how loved you are. And there's not a way for us to be able to reach out to every one of you individually to tell you that you're special and that we perceive the good in each one of you except through these little chats. I mean, we're just individual human beings, but there's a large number of us. They're not just here in the United States. Pastor Bob has networked for years, and there are people all over the globe at different times praying. Not because we've organized it that way either. I mean, there's not some sort of network where we send out neurons in a sim fashion to the rest of the group. We do get information from you as you're willing to share it. But that doesn't mean that we're not aware of needs because we are ourselves human beings with needs. And we know how to pray for that. And we do pray for that. And we know that several of you are also doing that for us and for each other. If we look for the good in everything and look for the good in each other, our prayer life is more fulfilling and more encouraging. It's very important. Ruthann, you're saying it makes you think of playing the glad game like Pollyanna, but there's so much truth to it. Look for the good. You're correct. That's absolutely correct. You got, I got a little tear going here. That's, uh, it's not allergies. It's my heart being touched. <laughs> the Pollyanna glasses. Just look for the good and ignore the bad. You know, there's some truth to that. We're not going to ignore the bad. The bad's going to be there. Um, we don't want to endure dishonesty or disrespect or unhappiness or evil. And those things exist and we're going to have to contend with them. But those difficulties do not, they are not our identity. They are challenges. Our identity is Jesus Christ. And Life is serious and it can sometimes be awful. That doesn't change our ability to be upbeat and hopeful. And the more grounded we are in the word, the more grounded we are in our relationship with, with Jesus, the more grounded we are in our relationship with each other, the more easy or the, 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 the easier it will be for our default to be Upbeat, encouraging, loving, respectful, honest, transparent, without judgment. We can't really do it right if we're not able to look for the good in each other and in just daily life circumstances. It's a survival skill. And God gives us the tools to be survivors of this, of this human condition. He gives us tons of tools. He talks about it in his word. He talks about you know putting on the armor of God. He talks about us not making decisions based on our emotions, but being able to process through what our knowledge is of his word, how to work and navigate through difficult circumstances. He talks about us 
um, encouraging our children in their areas of gifting. He talks to us about uplifting each other and, and how we can remain positive under dire circumstances. And, you know, we have available uh, um, in the merch store, there's free stuff. And um, some of that has to do with who we are in Christ. Um, you know, go there. There, you know, Dawn and Chris have done numerous podcasts uh, talking about our identity. And um, the truth is here in this little bit of time that we have left, what I know is he loves us. He's there for us. There's nothing we can't endure with his help. That sometimes his help includes our community. And if you're willing, if you're willing to be obedient, if you're willing to set yourself aside, and follow him, you will see the good. It's there. Without suffering, we wouldn't know joy. And yet, in the midst of suffering, we can feel loved because we are. In the midst of suffering, good things are still happening. There's some peace to know that on the other side of the suffering, there's, there is good. And perhaps in your initial experience with suffering, you don't know that. This is how we can be of help to each other. For those of us who have suffered and come through, we can be there for each other. We can hold others in their pain, in their sorrow. We can't fix it. We're not trying to fix it. We can just travel with them, shoulder to shoulder, sometimes just silently, sometimes encouraging, but we're there for each other, and there's nothing more important than that. So, whether you knew this when you were young or not, don't worry about what other people think of you. Today is what is important. Let it go. It's called work for a reason. Believe in yourself. Don't burn your bridges. Money, not the most important thing. Don't be afraid to stand up and speak out. It's not a race. Look for the good in everything. Ten little principles that make a big life, right? You guys probably have some amazing stuff as well to share, and please feel free to share those with me. I, you know, I mean, we've had, we all have people in our lives who have who have really made us bigger and most, you know, made our brains and our hearts grow in ways we didn't even understand, you know? Sometimes don't you ever have those little blips of like, aha, I now get what that person meant. Well, these are our aha moments. So share your ahas with me, with each other. I totally appreciate that. So thankful to be spending time with you today. I'm just gonna pray for briefly to before we say goodbye. Oh, Father. This has been an amazing time. I um, so love the fact that my, my family has been so instrumental in helping me grow to the person I am today. And um, I'm even more thankful for the Metal Matrix family and my friends in the Metal Matrix family that uh, continue to help me grow. And I just I ask you to put it on our hearts this week, each one of us, 
as we share with each other in, in, um, on Facebook, both just on the page and in each other's chats for the rest of the week that, you know, these principles and these aha moments that we can share them with each other and with the other podcasters. Help us bless each other, pay forward our knowledge, and help us go forth all week this week in love, encouragement, and let God be the judge. Let us be the love. Amen. Thanks, everybody. I'm glad to see you this week.